Jillian Fountain, project manager at Child Fund Caribbean, said that the execution of the child assault prevention program came about after having witnessed that a large number of children are being violated sexually here in Dominica. We were informed that between the years 2009 to 2015, there had been about 800 cases of children who are being sexually violated. And so, we're saying for a small country, which is about nature and purity and so on, this is, this is just too much. And even one is too much. And we need to look at empowering children and their parents to know how to protect themselves, you know, and, and how to see these perpetrators coming at them and what to do, how to say no, okay? Out of the many things taught, the program also helps children to put aside the myths in their minds and focus on the real realities of life, especially amongst women and children. So some of the things they would think of is that uh, only girls with short skirts dress real sexy on the road, get raped or get violated. They know that's a myth. It can happen to any type of girl, any type of woman, even a boy, okay? And so we're teaching them the realities of those things and how to deal with it. Yeah. The Child Assault Prevention Program is a one-hour duration within the classroom. Fountain did indicate that they began sessions focused firstly on the primary school level already at the Roosevelt at the Roseau Primary School and the Goodwill Primary Schools. Apart from teaching the kids to become alert and safe, they also seek to reach out to the communities where these particular incidents also take place. The National Employment Program, or NEP, through the Government of the Commonwealth of Dominica have officially launched a hospitality and apprenticeship training program. Parliamentary representative for the Portsmouth constituency and Minister for Trade, Energy and Employment, Ian Douglas, explained that the program forms part of government's growth and social protection strategy to have the youth become equipped and knowledgeable enough to combat scientific and technological challenges Dominica is faced with. We have to ensure that our population is trained to be able to meet those challenges. And that's really why we are here today. That is the purpose for us being here today. To ensure that when the Bois Cutlets and the Petit Colibris are ready to take off, the building, the structures are in, the furniture is in, the guests are coming in, but the component of the service that these people will receive is very important. And if we do not have you who are here on the ground, ready, willing, and able, and trained to provide that service, no matter how much chandeliers and how much beautiful glass and how much expensive champagne and wine and the bed can be double beds that they sleep in, but the service isn't there to complement all those amenities, then those places will not be a success. So the success of those investments really depend on you. Douglas stated that the government of Dominica have implemented several training programs after having recognized the urgent need to prepare the youth in order that they become better able to address the challenges expected on striving towards Dominica's continued development. Hence, one of the reasons for the implementation of the hospitality apprenticeship training program. The past two years, we have been aggressively pursuing training initiatives with a view to preparing young persons for the job market. Because there's one thing to have all of the opportunities in the investments that the opportunities those investments will create. But if we do not have the persons to take advantage of those opportunities, then it's almost like these investors will have to bring people in from foreign lands, from Antigua and St. Martin, from Indonesia and the Philippines to work as um, um, waitresses and bartenders and backroom operations and front desk managers if you are not equipped. And what would that do? Douglas was pleased to see the turnout and appreciated the willingness of the young women who decided to form part of the training module. However, knowing that most of the functions in the hospitality industry need young men, he hopes that soon enough more of the young men will come on board and participate in programs such as these. Junior Achievement Elementary Grades program that strives to prepare school students academically for the future on entering the working world held a WizKid competition amongst five schools. JA together with CashWiz Dominica were organizers of the event. 
The competition quizzed students based on their active listening skills, decision-making, computation, and teamwork, amongst others. While being questioned on lessons taught within their classrooms, they were tested in groups of twos from each of the participating schools. Results have shown that Isaiah Yankee of the Masak Primary School emerged a winner, whilst the JA Our Nation Whiz Kid Competition School Award went to the Rozo Seventh-day Adventist School. The rest of the participants came from the Newton Primary School, Goodwill Primary School, and the St. Luke's Primary. There was even a JA Lead Teacher Award that was presented to Keisha Barry, who teaches at the Rozo Seventh-day Adventist School. Seeing that we are speaking about the WizKid competition, let's just say that the manager of WizKid Dominica, Linthia Alfonso, made some very interesting remarks at the opening ceremony of the competition, where she explained what inspired Cashwiz Dominica to form a partnership with the Junior Achievers. I bet you want to know why. Cashwiz has decided to become a partner with JA Dominica, not only because we have a social commitment, but because the JA Our Nation program provides a practical information about businesses need for students' help that meets the demands in the job market, including high growth, high demand jobs as well. Alphonse confidently outlined that the program teaches students to become much more advanced or entrepreneurial thinkers. She sees many areas that will make way for the students' overall development. Following participation in the program, students will understand that businesses need individuals with skills that are in demand in the workplace. They will learn about entrepreneurship as well as the different types of resources needed in business production. In more local news, the Ministry of Health expressed that they've observed the strategic value of health to the country, Dominica and held a press gathering to provide an update on their MOUs, plans and challenges that they face as a ministry, as well as informing the public on information gathered from ministerial visits to different countries in efforts to improve on health services offered in Dominica. Here is Dr. Kenneth Daru, Minister for Health. In terms of um, the, the Cuba trip, as I said, it was very, um, very fruitful very fruitful. Um, we would have known and I would have said at the previous um, press, um, previous, um, press um, release that um, sometime last year the Cuba signed a new agreement with CARICOM countries as it pertains to collaboration, not just in the area and health, but collaboration between um, CARICOM and Cuba itself. We would know, of course, that Cuba has been um, very um, instrumental in terms of developing our, the health sector in terms of training doctors, I was way back as probably 1978, from what I recall. Yes, there was a lapse of 15 years um, in between when a new regime took over in 1980, which really didn't take advantage of this Cuban scholarship. But I think from 1996, when we established diplomatic ties with Cuba, Cuba, we've had this steady um, stream of, of medical um, doctors being trained in Cuba. Myself, I'm Cuban trained and very proud I'm Cuban trained medical doctor. So what they did is that we would have also noticed that in recent years the number of medical scholarships would have decreased. But I think but starting from this new academic year, 2015, 2016 academic year, the number of scholarships has gone back to seven per year. And in addition to this, um, they also offer in free, free specialties every year. Now these specialties um, are going to be of our choosing based on the country's need. After having carefully identified some of the areas that are mostly critical with regards to health in Dominica, the specialities will be made. From a number of visits to medical firms, they also saw the need for greater collaboration, being that most of the time Dominican patients are to be flown to either Guadeloupe or Martinique for medical attention. On that note, he announced that the medical services firm in Cuba offered the ministry to sign a memorandum of understanding. Upon review, he informed that very soon in the near future, they will be signing an MOU to have patients transferred to Cuba for medical care. <laughs> 